The airport in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, six years ago. This is where the story began. On the tarmac, I see white cargo planes being unloaded, food aid coming into the country, and at the same time, food being exported out. Why is a famine-struck country receiving food aid, exporting food to the rich world? To us. It didn't make sense. Returning to find out more, I couldn't imagine that it was the beginning of a much bigger story. If I can just point out, across the way here, uh, there is a, a neighbour of ours here. He's also a local person. Uh, he has uh, no uh, infrastructure much, no machinery. But what he does do is follow his crop very closely. And uh, he, he does everything at the right time. And you see, he's also got a very good crop. Now, uh, I'd like to just show you this crop just here. Now, the person, the farmer who has this is somebody who lives in Addis Ababa, They're not following their crop closely. They're what we call an investor. Uh, they come perhaps once a year to look at their crops. Now, the result of that is that uh, we have a, a lot of this weed. This is called, it's a grass weed, it's called asindabo. Literally, it means no bread. What we need is more of the, the mentality of the farmer rather than the investor. People who are committed to growing crops, following their crops, having that competitive instinct, wanting to find something which increases the production. One of the things they're very keen on is people with having export crops in order to increase the foreign exchange. Now, we haven't gone down that route. I mean, we, we do uh, save imports. Which variety is this? I am a grand member. Yes, Malian. Yeah. So, so uh, yes, block A and block B, they're ready now. And the others are almost ready. So, I mean, if you can come on Wednesday, Tuesday night you come. That's good. And also yours. Good, good. I think that's very nice. No problem with that then. That's good, Milian. Ishi.
commercial farming is absolutely essential in this country as in most countries. The peasant farmer is a very good farmer normally, but the peasant economy is only producing food for the rural community, for themselves. They cannot produce enough food for the whole population, nowhere near. So there has to be a very strong commercial farming sector. Ivan has been out here for five years, always working close with the community. Any time you said, please, can I go to my crops because it's, I must go, always we said, yes, no problem. I have said to the combiners, please go and harvest Mohammed's crops. You got the salary and you also you've had the leave when you needed it. You know, I know and God knows. So, what do you think? In our culture, when Shimagile will become, mm. it will be divided something mm. into two. A compromise. Yeah, yeah. We have to compromise that. Mm -hmm. We are Muhammad with you, there is peace. It is nice. For our yeah, yeah. Good yeah, of course, yeah. 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 For that case, we have to lose our money. Yeah. We but do we lose it. all our money or some of our money? So, some, some, but it is not... Uh... <laughs> Even having good reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kuno Ganzavale, Amain Kafalamafi, Sinile, Kana, Wan Uga, Juru. One of the, the chief things that you have to have is a great deal of humility. If you shout and demand things, you, you will make no progress. You cannot do anything without getting on with people, not pretending that you're much better, you know a lot more. In actual fact, it's largely through the goodwill and friendship of people in this area that we've managed to get to a position now where we're actually making some good progress. 77, 74 sack. Mm. And I think by 20 kilos, is it? Yeah, 20 kilos. It has been a, a great puzzle for a, a long time why agriculture has underperformed throughout Africa, really. And I really wanted to be involved in the uh, push forward to try and get more production, and uh, especially in a country where people were hungry. I consider it a great privilege to have this land. It is a great responsibility. It's a passionate thing, really, having possession of land, but uh, well, I'm just a farmer in that way. Uh, we don't want tens of thousands of hectares and shareholders. We're doing this as farmers. The land Ivan took over was an old state farm that hadn't been farmed for years. And the wheat from his fields will be eaten by Ethiopians, not exported. Ivan might be the exception to the rule, but at least it gives some hope. In Addis, things are getting even worse. 
The government is targeting the opposition and locking up the few remaining independent journalists. The federal police and 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 the federal I try to contact Argao, but he is impossible to find. And I have to return back home. Just a few weeks later, I see Argau again, now as a refugee in my hometown, Berlin. He's gotten a tip from a secret source. The government was about to arrest a group of journalists, his friends. Argau warned them so they could escape. But then the Ethiopian security police found out about it. They gave me an ultimatum. Either I gave them the name of my source, or I would be arrested. I could not betray my source. There was no other alternative than to flee the country. Argao had heard that the forced evictions in Gambela were creating a wave of refugees over the borders to South Sudan and Kenya. It seems that the land investments are also causing a refugee crisis. With Argo exiled, I take up the investigation. Returning on my own to Gambela, I contact Omot, the park official. We heard that the Indian company was given 300,000 hectares of parkland. And we were saying, but what is this? Because if it is given, there will be no park anymore because the, the amount of the hectares were too much. At the same time, uh, there was a news that uh, Saudi Star is to be given a land which is in the center of the park. And uh, we went again and talked with the regional government. We said, but what is going on? And they said, it is already uh, decided and they have started cultivating in the center of the uh, park. Unfortunately, nobody listened, and I was also kicked out. Local people have already decided that they are going to remain slaves of these uh, big investors because they don't have land to farm. At the end, they have to fail in the hand of these farmers. May we do labor, very slow labor, being paid very little, and you remain as a slave for these people. What is that, Omero? Huh? When he was saying, what are, where are we going to go? Are we leaving the country to be in exile? The remaining Anuaks, the ones who haven't fled, are now working as day laborers on their own former land. I decide to follow the trail of the people who have fled over the border to South Sudan. Yeah. 
Outside the capital, Juba, two and a half thousand people from Gambela are stuck in a refugee camp. The refugees haven't given up their hope for justice. They want the World Bank to recognize the harm done to them. It's okay if we just make this a little flexible, introductory visit if they're not ready. And... Yeah. Well, I work with an, an organization called Inclusive Development International, which is working to make global development more just. And we help marginalized communities whose rights have been abused in the name of development to claim those rights in the centers of power and to hold corporations and financial institutions like the World Bank accountable. The Anuak are filing a complaint. They want the World Bank to start an investigation on what happened to them in Gambela. PBS, Protection of Basic Services. This is one of the world's biggest aid projects. The World Bank has provided billions of dollars to the Ethiopian government. This project has a good purpose, to fight poverty in Ethiopia. But the government of Ethiopia decided that in Gambela, the way that they wanted to distribute basic services is by forcibly moving people into new villages. It was possible that some of the money being provided by the World Bank was being used directly for the implementation of villagization, including for uh, serious human rights abuses. I believe that with some hard work and, and advocacy, we, we can get the World Bank to uh, be accountable for what it's done. It's a bit difficult for me to say, but I mean, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that, that this was worth it. Will the World Bank listen to the Anuak people? What happens if they don't? Gazette and Yamoto, in a Latana, 
Welcome to the Austin Gardener. Call Cheryl now with your questions about gardening or landscaping. Hey, good morning, everyone. Kind of a cool morning out there, but you know what? I am really ready. I endorsed in the, the refugee program and uh, as a refuge, and first I came to New York, then just recently I came to this city. You know, once I couldn't find the way back to home. It's not that much of a, a laughable thing, and it's not funny. <laughs> you know, once you lost, even I remember last time, I you know I rotate in the same place four or five times, and it's it's not it's not good. I'm very much aware that. I'm extremely lucky. I'm safe and I even have got a job. Many of my colleagues are in prison or stuck in a refugee camp. All the same, I still feel a deep sense of loss. Violence has broken out in Gambella. The report is also mentioning that the big farm has been attacked and that several workers were killed. Frustrated young Anuak can't hold their anger back. They attack the foreign farms and anyone else they associate with the regime, guilty or not. Gambela of those days cannot be compared with uh, today's. I used to compare it with the Garden of Eden. But now it is like a dream to me. Things have changed. An attack took place on Saudi Star, and it was evening when people are coming out from the work. Two Pakistanis and three Ethiopians were killed. So due to this, the government sent a lot of troops to Gambela. And uh, after uh, arresting many people now, the next step was last week to start arresting people, which many friends, good friends of mine, came from me, from the government, and say, you are going to be arrested. So instead of waiting to be arrested, go somewhere for a while because this government, whether you are right, you have done nothing, they cannot ask you. They start with beating you, torturing you. Then when your case is uh, suspected and you are free, you have, nothing, you have done nothing, you are released with a lot of wound inside. And that's why I decided to move from my place to hide myself because of the fear of the threat. I don't fear arresting, I fear torture. I'm not really that keen on returning to Gambela. But if I can prove that the land investments are inciting violence, there's a good reason to go there. I just have to. The Saudi Star Farm has now turned into a military camp. 
The workers are escorted to the rice fields by heavily armed guards. What was this hill made for? This, this hill is made for first, uh, for taking a clear view all over uh, this, this place. For security, it is very nice. Here, people can come here, enjoy uh, the view here, the sunset from here. It's so beautiful. Why do you need so much security? Mm. Mr. Yitagis told me before that you had a problem with terrorists. Yes, uh, that is right. Sometimes before, uh, few guys, uh, they were armed and they, they, they injured us. They injured, they killed a few uh, guys. So we don't want that to happen uh, again for that reason. Uh, we have a security here. After the attack on the farm, the Ethiopian army sought revenge on the remaining Anuak in the area. Just a few years after the foreign investors first came to Gambela, the region is slipping into chaos and violence. The anger of the locals is turning into violent retaliation. The government responds by sending more troops in. Violence is breeding violence. I wanted to read you a short summary of the World Bank's response to your complaint and I tell you how the inspection panel, uh, what the inspection panel decided. It takes months, but the World Bank finally reacts. The complaints filed by the refugees leads to an internal investigation. The research team sent to Ethiopia needs a translator with local knowledge of Gambela, and they ask Omot. Omot feels obliged to help the truth get out, and so he accepts returning to Gambela, despite his fears. A dead donkey cannot fear Aina because uh, it is already dead. So this is where we are. A year later, the World Bank's report is finally getting ready. The Anuak refugees in the camps are mobilizing. And so this is a very important time 
for you to try to influence the World Bank. It is very important that they hear your voice, and that is the reason why I've come back, because I want to collect your messages and take them to Washington to deliver to the bank's board of directors. uh, we are particularly against foreign investment in our land without consultation of the villages, without compensation of the land. They destroy our history, our identity, our dignity. Land to our people it's a history. It's not our will at all for them to be there. We have not been consulted. We did not pay any compensation. And we are now in exile. Because we are in Kinimigwa <laughs> Beto marge ke beto maral medin bagami. Ne ano kono ba? Ne ne mudre dama. Teng jo alam bank mo kono pepeni ke. But komi mo kono pele ke ni. Ne ne mudre dama moro mo wo ke paj moro. Ke kaj moro. Oh, u dunyi yori. U chi u gogo pepeni mi. Ne mare kono dari ngwa pe manno. Agiri no juar gini gini. Korono ape nya gini ne dir gini kidgi kaj nya noye chen. Man agiri no juar gini. Ke pera no man ne wa juar gini. Lo man chana. Bek ne pepeni nga bogi. Ba ajuo ke iya kaj chen. Ke pera kaj juo ye bong. At the World Bank's annual meeting, the top management is gathering. The bank has overriding goals, which as you know are to end poverty and promote shared prosperity. And the purpose of the, the safeguard policies is to make sure that for every project that we have, we look at that project from the perspective of environmental and social issues, if there are any uh, adverse impacts that could possibly arise, then we have to characterize those and we have to address those. The World Bank, there's supposed to be consultation of the people that why we are here. And I would like you to look at us as civil societies. We are not against you guys. We are not against the development, but we are against when the sis is done to harm other people. The country where I come from, and Ethiopia, the government claimed that they win 99.9% in a country like that. Do you think that there's consultation there? So now when we are talking about giving a safeguard to other people, what about those countries who don't even acknowledge the safeguard of their own people? In Ethiopia, World Bank, instead of helping the people, is hurting the people. Instead of creating food security, causing food insecurity, so let them invest in the human right and the human dignity rather than those people that who will harm the people. Thank you.
Well, there's always a there's always a price to development. The issue is to understand what that is, and there are, in theory, winners and losers on all projects. Our challenge is and our desire is to make sure that you know there are mostly winners and very few losers. When the bank's report is released, it does admit a connection between the development program and the forced evictions. But nevertheless, it says, it's not the bank's fault that the local people lost their land. The claims from the Anuak are not recognized. Look, you know, there are, there are a lot of good people that work for the World Bank trying to do the right thing. But then, you know, there are the decision makers. And they're completely removed from the people on the ground who are impacted by the decisions that they make. And the decisions that they make are about dollars and cents. And maintaining cozy relationships with governments who are their, their clients. We all share a common vision of a socially inclusive, environmentally sustainable world, protecting the environment and the world's poorest and most vulnerable people in our projects. These are key elements in this vision. Fifteen million people have been displaced throughout the world. In most of the case, the funding is being given by the World Bank. They have been displaced in the name of the developments. In most of the case, these are the most vulnerable people. It's absurd that international financial institutions like the World Bank are immune from any type of legal accountability. You can't sue the World Bank in a court of law, even if the World Bank is responsible for grabbing your land and destroying your home. It's also very difficult to hold corporations legally accountable. That needs to change. What we need is more of the, the mentality of the farmer rather than the investor. The idea of, of foreign investors coming in, acquiring land, clearing people off that land, uh, probably isn't the best uh, development model. Um, you know, yes, it may produce uh, higher amounts of food, uh, but I think if you look at the, the countries which have achieved more sustainable, broad-based, equitable growth, they tend to do it uh, based on small-scale farmers. The huge firms that come here, big companies taking hundreds of thousands of hectares and the effect is that local people are displaced and their entire culture is disturbed. Altogether I'd much rather see a more cautious approach and farming on a more human scale. The camp will expand, the capacity will expand, the rice mill there will expand that side. This jungle will be, uh, will be cleared and will be used for the camp expansion. Tomorrow we'll expand everything here. After six years, my story is coming to an end. Across the street from my hotel, Omot, the former park official, is held in the notorious Kilinto prison. Just a few weeks after the World Bank rejected the Anuak's claim, Omot was arrested and charged under the terrorist law. He's now facing 14 years to life. Meanwhile, the country is on fire. Tens of thousands of Ethiopians are taking to the streets, demanding freedom and the rights to their land. Mm -hmm. 
The first time I came here, three million Ethiopians needed food aid for their survival. Since then, more than a million people have lost their livelihood when their land was taken for the foreign investors. At the same time, the export of food has increased steadily. <laughs>